Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. In this video, we're going to talk about lead clips. We're going to look at when to use them, when not to use them, do's, don'ts, and how to get the best out of them. Let's get into it now. Let's start by having a look at one that probably every carp angler in the land has fished with, the original standard quarter lead clip. So when you buy a pack of these, this is the actual lead clip part itself. And then these couple up with the tail rubber to match like that. So let's set one of these up and see what's going on. So to start with, we've got some mainline threaded through a standard piece of tungsten rig tubing. And the first bit that goes on is the tail rubber. Then we take the lead clip itself. Then we take a size eight ring swivel and we're just going to put that on with a palomar knot. Tighten that down there. Then we trim off the tag end. Then we take the lead clip and we push the swivel into the lead clip like that. Now that's not pushed through far enough. When you get this right, they make a click. And to get that click, you hold the body of the lead clip, you pull the main line, there we go. You might have even heard that little snap there. So that's that properly installed. Then we take our tail rubber, insert the rig tubing into the tail rubber like that. Now I'm just going to take a standard two and a half ounce swivel lead, clip that on. And then what you should always do before you push the tail rubber on, you should wet it. You only need to push it on about halfway up, something like that on these. What you should never do is muller it on like that. If you do that, it makes it very difficult for the lead to come off. So if I put it on as you should put it on, halfway, something like that, we'll see how that works. I'm just going to take a rig loop this on push the anti-tangle sleeve up like that make sure that's set about halfway up let's have a look at how this is going to work in a, in a fishing scenario so carp's going to come along pick up the bait here first thing he's going to do is feel the lead and his immediate reaction is then to try and shake this out. So he's going to give it a big old shake, dunk, and it's off. That was perfect. This is how lead clips should work. If you set them up right, this is what's going to happen. Let's have another go at this. So I'm going to put this back together wrong. I'm going to push this tail rubber all the way on like that. Carp's going to come along, pick up the lead, and then he's going to try and swing it out. And what's happening is that that lead is staying in contact with the clip. This gives the carp every opportunity to swing this lead around and throw the hook. Now this is something that we've taught carp to do by fishing with lead clips over the years. This is not the situation that we want. If we fish like this, we're making it easier and easier for the carp to get away with this. You might not even get a beep. You might get a couple of beeps, but either way, the carp's gonna get away with it and you're not gonna hook him. The other problem with this setup is it takes a lot of force to try and pull that lead off. Now imagine if that lead got jammed I'm pulling really hard here, and that tail rubber is not moving. As time goes on, if this rig was lost in the water, mainline failure, as the weeks go by, this tail rubber will virtually weld itself on to this lead clip and make it utterly immovable. This turns it into a, a, into a death rig or a tether rig, unfortunately because the lead can't separate safely from the hook. 
If you just nick them on like that, that's great. Push them half on like that, that's great. If you do that, you can turn a perfectly safe product into a dangerous product. Now I think that there's a number of reasons why uh, the tendency is to push tail rubbers on harder than, than they should be. If I just push that on lightly like that, if I was to attach some PVA mesh or a solid uh, solid bag, something like kind of two inch diameter or something, a fairly, fairly substantial bag, what's going to happen is that when I cast this rig in the water, lead will go first, bags travel in behind, lead will impact the water and then the bag will impact the water. If you make the size of the bag too large, the resistance of the bag on the surface of the water when it impacts can be enough to pull the lead clip, the lead off the lead clip. You wind back in, you've lost the PVA, you've lost the lead, so what do you do? You push the tail rubber on firmer, which as we've already seen makes it a less safe rig. So let's have a look at the method of stopping the lead coming off early, but still enables us to fish with some PVA. So I'm going to take some PVA tape here. This is just the narrow stuff. So let's take uh, 10 centimeters of the PVA tape. Take a lead clip. And just offer that up like that. Take the PVA and then we simply do an overhand knot and we want that overhand knot to go around the lead clip like that just on the arm there do another and then another cut the tag ends off you'll see here that the tail rubber is still only half pushed on but we've made a nice secure little PVA strap around the arm and if we look at what happens there if I take that lead and try and pull it off it takes an awful lot of force now to dislodge that lead but as soon as it's in the water that will melt within 20-30 seconds something like that and it'll be perfectly safe. It'll stop the lead prematurely ejecting on impact with the water and it'll enable you to safely fish with larger PVA bags. Let's have a look at some other pitfalls to avoid here. So this time the swivel is only pushed in so that the end of the barrel is flush with the end of the clip. I've taken the silicon tail rubber and I've pushed it on so that all the serrations are engaged. This is a fairly kind of common thing that I've seen. We'll set it up on the board. Let's see what happens. So fish comes along, feels the weight of the lead, and he's going to give it a shake once, twice, and we can see what's happened. The swivel has pulled the main line out of the clip. Now, what's wrong with that, you might say? What can happen is that the main line is now sliding through the rig tubing. The end of the rig tubing is only 0.75 mil diameter on this one. You can imagine how easily a little bit of grit or silt can block that hole and it can block it enough so that uh, it makes it very difficult for the main line to be pulled through. I've simulated this, but I've just tied an overhand knot to simulate what happens if this rig tubing gets, gets stuck on the main line. Now imagine that this lead were to get trapped, and I'm going to simulate that by holding it in my hand. It can get trapped between rocks. 
I imagine I've still got a fish on the end here and I'm just pulling from the, the swivel I could pull from the bait doesn't really matter but I can pull and I can pull and I can pull I'm really pulling really hard and you'll see that the tubing is kind of rocking up like that the lead clip is not ejecting the lead when the lead clip is no longer in contact with a swivel it's that that enables the lead to come free if I just hold the body of the lead clip like that and do that that comes off easy but that's not the situation we've got here even if I push the tail rubber half on and you see what happens the tail rubber is actually being pulled tighter onto the lead clip this makes the whole thing unsafe in, in my opinion so it's really really important that this swivel stays in contact in its lock groove with that lead clip body if it doesn't the whole thing especially with rig tubing becomes dangerous i'm going to show you something else which i've seen and uh, seen high profile anglers uh, uh, demonstrate this technique as well and uh, for, for me for me it's an absolute no I'm just going to pop the swivel out i'm going to take a pair of pliers and i'm carefully going to crush you can see you've just gently changed the shape of that swivel there so let's have a look what happens when we try and insert that swivel into the clip it flies in the clip and doesn't lock at all so it can pop out very easily let's have a look at what that looks like in a fishing situation so carp's going to come along he's going to pick that up and a little shake and it's off it's still kind of bouncing around if I straighten, straighten the tubing out a bit that slides away the idea behind doing this is to um, prevent the carp from using the weight of the lead to throw the hook by turning it into a so-called semi-fixed running rig as we've already seen it might be a semi-fixed running rig except it isn't because this will never come off in the event of a mainline failure in the event of some rubbish getting up the rig tube in here the whole thing turns in to a tether rig so i have a great deal of respect for the angling ability of the the guy that uh, has, does this there's probably been a few of them that have done it over the years but um, i think you only re really understand why this is not a good idea when you have a lake when you get to drain it down and when you get to see what rigs are left over at the end of the year and how they worked and the problems with them so there's nothing wrong per se with the original standard quarter safety lead clip if you use it exactly right but you only have to get one or two things wrong and it can easily become dangerous the last lead clip i want to look at is the nash heavy duty one so uh, i started the, using these for um, for much bigger leads six and a half ounce eight ounce something like that or on big waters where I'm casting a long way using four and a half ounce distance leads. I found with other uh, normal kind of duty clips like the Avid and the Corda ones that uh, the lead was ejecting prematurely on, uh, on contact with the water even if I use PVA in some situations I even crack the leg off especially on the old Corda ones. So these Nash ones are designed to uh, fish with heavier leads they get a much more robust arm and they come with this u-shaped double pin arrangement they also come with their own tail rubbers <laughs> let's set one of these up now take the main line thread it through the tail rubber break off our u-shaped pin a bit more robust that one and we thread on actual lead clip itself take a standard size 8 ring swivel palomar that knot 
together. Lose the tag end. So to assemble this, what you've got to do, push that in like that. And we take the U, the U piece, insert it in the clip and drive it home like that. If we put a rig puller on the swivel there, if I hold the clip, you can see that that's very, very secure in place and there's no way that that ring swivel is going to be able to pull out that clip, which is exactly what we want. So this clip is designed to work with bigger leads. So I'm going to grab one of my bigger leads. I think this is a four and a half ounce. Put the tail rubber on there. And these are quite stiff. I've got to wet that first. And I literally just nick that on. Take our rig tubing, stick that down the silicon sleeve, take our rig, put that back together like that. Let's have a look at how that works in a fishing scenario. Carp comes along, picks up the rig, and feels the weight of the lead. Gonna give it a good shake. Bunk, bunk. Now, you can see that these clips, they are quite stiff. And I've only nicked this on. I mean, really, really nicked it on. The fact that it doesn't come off quickly if that was a much larger lead if it was probably like an eight ounce lead or something it wouldn't be a problem but i've only just really nicked that on let's have another go at that got it that time it's great that these clips will take a heavier lead but it's not so great that it can take a number of goes in order to dump the lead so what I found on these, and you can do it with other styles of lead clip as well, but especially these, is that I found it better to cut down the leg. Let's have a look at that now. So there's a bit of trial and terror this. Right. There's a couple of serrations that I know I've got to line up with here. And I know if I have just two serrations left, it works like I want it. So get it on there, snip that off. You can see the serrations hopefully that I was talking about. Let's put this back together, put the lead back on. So it's actually quite, quite firm to, to push that on because you've got more of the serrations of this uh, tail rubber in contact. But if you just, just catch the end of the leg there. Uh, fish comes along, feels the weight of the lead. Once, twice, <laughs> and it still didn't work. <laughs> oh dear, I love lead clips. Right, little reset. Once, twice, three times and yes it did eventually dump the lead if you need to fish really big leads even bigger than this one really six and a half eight ounce then using a, a heavy duty clip like this is a, is a good idea and cutting down the leg I could even take some more off this to in order to get it to, to work as, as I want it to uh, is, is definitely a good option. If you're just using regular sized leads, then fishing a heavy duty lead clip like this, it's not a good idea because it makes it quite dangerous. I know for lots of you guys out there that using a lead clip is your kind of go-to solution. No matter where, you, where you're fishing and what you're doing, you're going to use a lead clip. Well, 
for the last 10 years, I haven't. I still use lead clips, but only in very certain situations. If I'm fishing on the river and I want to dump the lead on the take because of rocks, because of underwater hazards, or any, any lake scenario whereby I, I need to get the fish up in the water. If I'm fishing in heavy weed uh, and I want to dump the lead on the take, then, then lead clips can play a role. If you don't want to use the, lose the lead on the take for whatever reason, don't use a lead clip. Just stick to a running lead. Check out some of my other videos on running leads. You've got an inline running lead and you've got the, um, uh, the Mono D running lead system. I hope you found that information on lead clips useful. Been learning this stuff for 20 years now. I've made all sorts of mistakes over the, uh, over the years. Got some questions, leave a comment. I'll always try and get back to you. And if you like the video, do give us a thumbs up. And if you really like it, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.